To the Focus Target Podcast, I am your host, Smiley, with me as always, Shy and Van. Gentlemen. Somebody. Hey. We are, we're live on the internet this time. We are wow. streaming this episode uh live streaming on our twitch channel twitch.tv backslash focus target podcast um as a as a group we've actually kind of started getting into streaming so if you're interested in watching any of us actually play some of the games that we talk about um check out uh both the twitch channel and our youtube page where we'll be uh where we'll be having the the streams after the fact for you to watch at your leisure um we'll have all of our focus target contact information at the end of the show of course um but yeah i thought i'd give you guys a a little bit of a notification about that if you if you follow the podcast um you've probably gotten some notifications that we've been we've been doing a little testing a little test streaming lately uh we've got some stuff out there we're still obviously doing some polishing as you can see we've got different backgrounds we've got a little bit of a different setup going on uh so we're still kind of feeling it out in the process of getting up to speed but um I think we're all excited about it. I know Van is just chomping at the bit to go streaming. Yeah, I don't get it, man. I don't know what happened. I just, <clears throat> it's funny. One night I, I couldn't fall asleep and I literally just started researching streaming. And then here I am one boom mic and condenser and everything later <laughs> like doing this live stream. Here. <laughs> so I don't know. I just here went we down are. this rabbit hole. That's, that's one thing about me is once I start getting into something, like it's hard for me to stop and it's annoying. Um, so Shini knows that once I start getting into something, she just like backs off says, okay, I'm out of the way for this one. And I'm just going to go down that rabbit hole the whole time for a long time, head first into the deep end. I don't know how many other analogies I can give. You can Do you think it was time. the new computer? I think, I think certainly any excuse to play with the new computer and test its limits, um, would certainly have influence on that. So yes. Well, and speaking of influencing people, um, I've been, I've been, I don't know led down the dark path of getting a new computer of my own. So now we've now that we're finally the long national nightmare of when will Van's computer arrive is over, we can play a new game called When Will Smiley's Computer Arrive. Um it's currently set to arrive on 420 uh 2021, which is about six weeks out. Um I feel like that's a little optimistic. We'll see. I'm not really expecting mine till early May, but you know, you never know. You never know. Yeah, I think that's go. that's what I told uh Shini I estimated early may so and then they just did an update and they said uh yeah it's two weeks on top of your normal three to four week processing time for anybody ordering a 3070 so which i did yeah yep so So that puts you at six weeks from the day you ordered so i don't know man actually that might put you at the end of april but who knows wishful thinking we'll we'll stay optimistic but uh so yeah a lot lot going on in, in the land of focus target shy what's going on with you are you excited to do some streaming here yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I don't know. I've been trying to think of like, I think we've all said that like we've thought about different games to stream and that it kind of opens up some new possibilities. So I'm kind of in the same boat thinking about what I could do, what what would be fun to stream. Inconvenient because so, I know one of the things you wanted to stream back in the day was <clears throat> or the Visions. That's something yeah, you talked about. about that, now, yeah, I thought about that. Now, of course, you just, you just stopped playing that, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you stopped playing before too, so it wouldn't be the first time. Let's be honest. Hopefully, hopefully it's uh, the last time. <laughs> um, so I guess while we're talking about diving headfirst into streaming, so one thing that I, I did want to do in the past was um, like console streaming, right? PS4 and whatnot, but not with like the PS4 limitations. So back then, the only way to do it was to get a, a video capture card. I think it's called shy or video capture device or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, they used to be expensive. They were like a hundred and something dollars, $200. So I was like, I don't want to put that money out for that kind of thing. So now you can go on Amazon, you can get a video capture device for like 30 bucks. And apparently it'll like do pass through like even up to 4K. So that's that's I mean, there's there's a cheap entry right there into maybe some Breath of the Wild or some other type of, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch streaming or something like that. Not limited to PC. Now that we have the setup, all you do is just add it as an additional uh, source on your scene. You're good to go. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to look into that as well. There's definitely, I think, a lot of opportunity. Uh, I play a lot of console games and now I've 
Uh, you might notice if you're a long time watcher of the podcast, my background is a little bit different. Um, this week, my wife, my lovely wife, Sarah, who was very helpful, uh, helped way more than I expected her to or wanted her to since she is pregnant. Um, I didn't really expect her to help me move a bunch of stuff around, but uh, she's very sweet and she she uh, helped me kind of turn this around. And so we basically put everything that's in this room I am now into the other room and vice versa. And so now my main computer setup is in here and right you can't see it but right over this way is a t is a my tv with a ps4 hooked up and a switch set up so it would be very easy for me to make the connection to my pc uh if i wanted to stream something on there as well so um so yeah a lot a lot coming down the pipeline from uh the focus target podcast so if uh if you're interested in that uh please stay tuned um however for the moment we've got a podcast to do gentlemen so uh let's get into it uh we've our first question of the day was all about streaming our real question of the day it relates back to what we talked about a little bit in our last episode we were talking about kind of what we were doing and uh one of the questions that uh we had talked about that i thought was an interesting one to bring up on the podcast was uh you know we all three of us have spent probably too much of our lives playing different video games. Uh, so the question today is what game do you think you spent the most hours playing? Now, the problem with that is that the answer for all of us would probably be the same, probably Final Fantasy XI, because MMOs just suck up a disproportionate amount of the time. So to make it a little bit more interesting, let's, let's take MMORPGs off the table. Let's take mobile games off the table. And let's talk about either console or PC, maybe more like single player or, or, or like more smaller multiplayer games. Um, which do you think you've spent the most total hours playing over the course of your lifetime? I'm going to start today with Van because he's got the cool focus target insignia, which makes him look very official. <clears throat> is it too much? Doesn't no, seem like too it. much, but it's a little gaudy. Mm. But it kind of works. Go with it. Roll yeah, I think I think we'll go with it. Um, I don't know this. So this this was pretty hard because there's a lot of games you play that don't tally up how many hours, like the convenience of Steam or more recently um, Nintendo Switch and stuff like that. Um, so part of me actually wants to say coincidentally a recent game which is animal crossing because i have 200 no 300 plus hours in that game which is a pretty substantial time outside an mmo but i think if i were being completely honest with myself and you can tell me if this works or not but i think the the battlefield series in general so i'm not just picking one game but just the battlefield in general yeah, that's a fair just every next iteration upon next iteration, I've put I don't know, hundreds of hours into each version. So I think collectively, um, Battlefield has taken up most of my time. Good answer. What about you, Shy? I'm um, according to Steam, it's XCOM too, and I think that's probably pretty fair. I've uh, I've put I'd says it's I've put in 300 plus hours on Steam into that game, and uh, there's maybe games I've put in more time than that. Um, maybe like some of the Halo games might rival that, but played a lot of XCOM too. All right, that's fair enough. Yeah, you've talked about that quite a bit, so that doesn't surprise me. I had a hard time with this as well. Um I had a couple of good honorable mentions. I know Civilizations 5. Uh I played so much of. I've got almost 300 hours logged on Steam of that. And partially it's because those games are so long, but I really got into that for a while. Um if you I want to go the van route and combine series in a franchise, the Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers game. Good one. Which hopefully you guys can look forward to some combined streaming on that uh, coming up at some point here. I want to get Van back into a, into a match on a stream. But um, I have over 400 hours <laughs> logged between Magic the Gathering 2013 and 2014, which is uh, incredible. And that doesn't even count 2012, which also I'm, I, I don't have it installed currently, so I didn't see how many hours I had on that. But that's got to be up there but over over and above all of those I, if again if we're doing a little bit of a you can tell me if this is fair or not but uh, the game that came to mind for me was final fantasy 4 especially when you bring in the after the uh not the after years i'm sorry that was the sequel the uh free enterprise which is the randomizer that i've talked about many times on this podcast um i have played that randomizer so much um it's something my son and i have spent hours and hours playing with each other uh like competing with each other and watching each other play um over the course of the past couple of years playing it on my own and then when you couple that with the with the original game which is right back there on my 
on my bookshelf, um, which was my favorite game. I played it, uh, you know, I've played it so many times. I know it in inside and out. I, I have to think that's probably the game that I've given the most hours to. So I'm going to say Final Fantasy IV. All right. Well, <clears throat> if you would like to tell us, uh, dear listeners, you know, what games you've spent the most time with, or if you have comments on the games we chose, if you think Van and I cheated by combining technically <laughs> difficult games and you want us to, to give us a different answer, um, let us know. Our co- our uh, contact information will be provided at the end of the show. So you can also just in... type directly in the chat since we're live yes, streaming. If, if you're watching us live, uh, Van is monitoring <clears throat> the chat. If we get any viewers and and questions we can incorporate you if you watch us live you can be a part of the question of the day right here with us and you know we'll we'll read your answers on the air if if we deem them worthy he whosoever be worthy it's pretty Um, easy to be damn worthy let's be honest yeah it's not especially right now it's pretty it's not a high bar bar. (laughs) all right well you know we've had some fun today but it's time to get serious because today's topic is if it wasn't spoiled for you by the title of the stream uh life in the thereafter so we're gonna get religious we got a little bit political a couple shows ago it didn't destroy the podcast we didn't turn on each other and 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 become ravenous animals so we're gonna push our luck and talk a little bit about religion and the afterlife and um the meaning of life uh which is a question that i think a lot of people throughout the course of human history have been interested in uh as a philosophy major obviously something that i um have spent some time pondering so um let's talk a little bit about the meaning of life um it's kind of a broad question and so what do you think what do you guys think like when we're talking about the meaning of life like what let's start with what does life mean to you um, and then maybe we'll talk about some some of the general theories. But like, uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go back to shy this time uh, as my religious, my resident religious man. Um, you know what? What do you think the meaning of life is? What do you get out of life? What What's your purpose here on this planet? It's a good question. Easy question. Um, easy question. Easy, question. Super yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah think, Not real uh, deep at all. Just kind of a shallow question. <laughs> Yeah, kind of question you can answer in about 30 seconds, right? right? Well, we're going to have a hard time filling time on this pod, I can tell. Probably. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's going to be hard. So this is where, when we were talking about doing this podcast, and it, sometimes an answer to a question like this almost needs its own background, potentially, and its own, like, mm-hmm. preamble. <laughs> so I'm going to try to, like, answer it in, like, 30 seconds or a minute, <laughs> as as condensed as I can. But I think... um. I think that, you know, on a very personal level, um, so as you mentioned, like, I don't know what you put it, but like the, like the resident religious man, um, I think the way the, you know, uh, the greatest commandment in the Bible is love your God and love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Or those are the two greatest commandments. First is love, love the Lord your God and love the second, you know, the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And so I think like that sums up basically what I would define as the meaning of my life. And that's to love and worship God. And then second most to love my fellow man as if it, as if they're me, like, you know, you treat people like you would want to be treated. You treat them as God created them to be, you know? Um, so that would, I think that would be my, my short answer. All right. That's good. That's, that's a very good one. Yeah. I mean, that's gets us right into some popular theories, right? Like, like you said, that's, that's certainly the Catholic <clears throat> belief right is is to the you know and and obviously even maybe beyond that the christian belief um maybe even uh, you know i don't know as much about judaism but i know that they look at the old testament and that's where that came from right like the 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 tablets from from yeah right like it was first two it was drawn up yeah it was drawn up yeah i mean that was summarized by jesus obviously obviously in the new testament which which jews don't believe in but i mean that you're right that was pulled from the old testament kind of pulled from those the from the Ten Commandments. Uh, what about you, Van? What's what's the meaning of your life? <clears throat> you know, I I had time to think about it too. Unlike Shy, who had to jump right in, um, and I still don't know if I have a good answer for that. I think I'm still as still for impactful meaning. as a question that is. I don't know if it's important to me to actually have a meaning 
of life, like to actually have a purpose of being here or whatnot. So it um, sounds like your purpose is to live in the moment and not worry about why. Yeah. Just to, to, to be. Yeah, to be, but, and again, this doesn't have meaning, but of course there's um, certain codes, right, and ethics that I live by in the moment, but I don't know, and we could, we'll probably get to this, I don't know if it's for the purpose of attaining a specific situation in an afterlife, but rather a innate moral compass that I just have and I've always had my entire life. Let me uh, let me ask you this, Van, because I think because like a meaning or pers- purpose of life doesn't have to be like a religious, you know, association it doesn't even have to have like a metaphysical or philosophical association, like potentially like I would define a meaning to life as being like I wake up every morning and I want to see my daughters like grow up and like be successful, you know, or like I want to, you know, take take care of my family. Like, I think that could be a meaning of, a you know, one's meaning of life. life. I don't know, like if like there's more of like a practical kind of like, I don't know. Um, yeah, like if you're talking about things that are important to me, I mean, it goes without saying, like, right. But uh, I don't know. And, and this may be just be semantics, but I feel like that uh, if we can use purpose in the same place as meaning, then I guess that would make sense, right? Like, I feel like my yeah. purpose for living now is certainly like number one, to be a good steward for my family, to take care of my family, yeah. um, no matter what. That's that's like the ultimate thing. There's nothing else uh, more important than that. Um, so yeah, my purpose for being alive right now, if you want to be as like, um, literal as possible is absolutely my family. Now, prior to that, it was probably to be with my wife. And then prior to that, um, I don't know to find a wife. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's a, it's a difficult one, but I like it. Yeah. I think that's fair though. Right. Smiley. Would you agree? Like, I don't think it need, I think that I think you can interchange meaning and purpose. I think that, uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, in a, in a way, it, it's to me, it's what motivates you. Like I think what what you said before, Shai, makes sense as far as like when you get up in the morning. What? Why do you keep going? Why are you here? Like, what are you trying to accomplish at a very high level? And you know, maybe that's you know religious or or to fulfill a religious goal or a moral goal. And maybe it's more down to earth to you know give your family a good life to you know go with that. I mean, that and that kind of brings us into mind if if you're through with your thought van. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Pretty short. Um, you know, to me, the meaning of life and really the universe and everything is of course, 42. So yeah. I'm everybody knows that talking about, um, I, I feel like you're missing the point, but, um, beyond that, I guess, um, what movie was that? That was, uh, it, well, it Hitchhiker's was Guide to the Galaxy, yeah, it's the one. Book, which is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which was made into a movie, right. it's an okay movie on its own, but it's not very true to the book. And I definitely recommend the book over the movie. Uh, the movie was fine. A lot of good people in that in that movie. Fantastic cast, and they and they really did great. But some plot choices, I, I don't know about. Anyway, <laughs> well, that's that's well, those long time listeners of podcast. Well, no, I probably never read the book, so yeah. that's why I instinctively referred to the movie. Yeah, fair enough. And it, it was a fun movie. I like it, it, but it just doesn't quite hold a candle to the book. The book is very special. Um, anyway. If you want to come down to, you know, what my philosophy is, it's it's kind of actually a mix uh, between the two of yours. Um, you know, I'm more of an agnostic. I'm not particularly religious. So, um, you know, I don't have as much of a religious impetus as mine. But, you know, uh, this was something that I kind of formulated as as I was building my own personal philosophy, which as a philosophy student, you that's kind of what you're doing is you you study a lot of different ideas and ultimately you try to come up with well what do i believe like who do i think is right what pieces of these different thinkers do i think we're onto something and um to me my purpose in life is to be a net positive force in the lives of the people who i interact with so like i want for anybody who is around me whether it's every day like my wife or my family uh you know my son the my coworkers, or if it's just people that I interact with in line at a grocery store or who listen to this podcast or who I have a very light touch and influence in their lives. Like my goal is always to enrich rather than detract, to make it so that anybody who comes in contact with me is better Mm -hmm. for coming in contact with me rather than worse. 
Um, and that's not always easy. Like it seems like a simple thing, but when you think about um, how easy it is to have road rage uh, when you're driving or to be intolerant with people who are, um, you know, maybe not up to your standard of common sense or things like that. <laughs> it, really, it really takes some discipline to remember that like, even people who you don't agree with, even people who you uh, f- maybe think aren't, you know, doing the right thing or, or living their best life. Like I still want to try to be a pot. I want to try to make things better for people. I want people who are not, you know, if they're, if, if I think that they're kind of dumb, I want to try to help them. I want to educate. If I think that they're doing something wrong, I want to be a positive role model or a a force to get them on the right path. And if they're doing something better than me, I want to learn from them and, um, and, and, and appreciate the things they do. So that's, that's kind of been my moral philosophy. Um, especially the last couple of years where I feel like there's just so much kind of hate and demonization of people who are different, have different ideas mm-hmm. and who, who you don't like what they do. It's easy to, to, to feel hateful towards mm-hmm. them. And, and it, it takes, it takes a little discipline sometimes to not, um, to not sink down to that level. It, it, it's a challenge every day. So I'm certainly, <laughs> I certainly don't always succeed, but so I have a question for you. Yeah. How often does that thought occupy your time? Do you find yourself considering that frequently or infrequently? And what would you do to define those as? I would say not as frequently as I should. Sure. Right. There's times, too many times where after the fact, yeah, I'm like, you know, I, I flipped that dude off at the light and I really should remember that like, I've made mistakes when I was driving. I've, I ran, I've run a red light on accident before I've, yeah. missed, you know, I've, I've done dumb things cause, cause we're all human. Right. And so instead of, you know, putting negative energy out, out into the world, I should, I should be a little bit more rem- like, remember that like, Hey, I've made mistakes too. Like maybe this guy is just, you know, he's maybe not deserving of being, having a fist shaking at him you know um so so i do i do try i do find myself thinking a lot but oftentimes like my failing is that i don't um think of it enough in the moment yeah and it would be more useful i'm I'm, i feel like i'm getting better at that but um you know especially you know when it comes to to politics a lot of times like there's a lot of things or just in the news in the media in general there's things that really kind of can be very triggering, right? Like, I mean, I think we all see that. Like we see people doing things that we find morally reprehensible or financially irresponsible or or whatever the case may be. And it's hard to keep a level head, especially in the moment. So. Yeah, I gotcha. To put it in religious terms, that's my cross to bear, I guess. Yeah. And, and being, being in the moment, right. Being present. That's a, that's a Buddhist philosophy. Buddhist concept where they always want you to truly be in the moment so that you can catch these feelings before they turn into emotion or physical outbursts or things of that nature. So a lot of wisdom in Buddhism for sure. Uh, Do we want to talk about that a little bit about some of the popular, popular theories? I mean, we've got the idea of like karma uh, of reincarnation in some, you know, some Eastern religions and philosophies. Um, We've got the idea of heaven and hell in in christianity and and um you know in in a lot of other faiths most faiths tend to share some sort of nirvana or heaven or eternal paradise things like that that um that specifically the afterlife i mean we talked a little bit about meaning of life but now maybe we're transitioning to afterlife because for a lot of these philosophies the goal is the afterlife and the meaning of life is to get you there, to get to a positive afterlife, to get to a either a higher level of of ascending or a a paradise versus an eternal damnation. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? You, should we start with uh, again our resident our resident religious man, Shy? Like what you know you you're very much um, I think a little bit more than myself and Van into the into that religious side of things. How much would you say that your daily motivation is is motivated by the afterlife and 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 that is a goal i would say i would say very little probably um and i think that because i was was curious about that i don't and and i've not taken a class before ever i've never like had like an exposure to like a broad depth like in like a like a because i mean that's like where i work i work at a seminary it's postgraduate school for pastors and missionaries and like 
you can today, you know, they take like a, a semester course where they like deep dive into like different world religions. And like, mm-hmm. um, and I've, I've always wanted to like audit one of those classes or, you know, sit in on one. So I could kind of get some like really intense exposure to like, you know, a bunch of like a lot of the major world religions. But I think this is where I thought, like, I feel like once again, like there needs to be a lot of clarification. And I wanted to clarify a little bit because I knew we were going to be talking about this. Yeah. That what I'm gonna what I would talk about as far as like what like the like if you took Christianity's like ultimate uh, how the, how Christianity views the afterlife that what I'm gonna say right now probably doesn't line up with maybe ninety percent plus of like the American church because and I would just I would say that the American church probably doesn't look like what Jesus intended in the Bible. Um, and I, I think, and then there's, there's a passage in the, in the new Testament where, you know, Jesus is talking about when he will, he will return and when he, you know, when he comes back and like talking to people and people will say, you know, I, you know, why, you know, I did all this stuff for you. You know, I, 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 I preached in your name. I, I, I served you and he's going to look at them and say, I never knew you. And I think, uh, like you mentioned, you made the comment that, you know, most faiths are based on the afterlife and getting there. And I don't think that was ultimately the goal. Like, if you boil Christianity down, that's not the goal at all. And I think, like, this is where I just wanted to take, like, a minute, <laughs> hopefully, and not say anything blasphemous, hopefully, but just, like, boil down, like, like what Christianity believes about the world and, like, why, like, you know, why why maybe the message of Christianity might matter. And, I mean, basically, if you boil down the idea, like, why the Bible exists and why the Judeo-Christian faith exists, the idea is that, you know, God created, you know, matter, he created existence, he created the universe, and it was good. Like, that's what the Bible says. But then, because of sin, things went wrong. Sin entered the world, and and what was good became not good. And so, the whole point of the Bible, the whole point of history, the whole point of creation is, like, God had a plan to bring what what went bad back to being good. He, he, he had a plan to write that, and that's what the Bible's all about. And so, as far as, like, the, per- like, Thoughts on the afterlife, like the after, like the end of time is basically God finally doing that. It's like the final point where God comes back and he does make everything right in the end. Um, and then like, and then going forward, things are right. And so it's not so much like, I don't know. I don't think that, that God would want Christians on earth just to be sitting around daydreaming about heaven. Like the Bible talks about like a large part of a, you know, human's life, uh, if lived right, rightly, is like trying to to fall, like become more like Christ. Like that's that's what the Bible, the New especially New Testament, talks about, and like um, trying to emulate Him and trying to um, like the Bible. Like I don't know, the, in in Christian higher education is called sanctification, and it's the idea of becoming more like Christ and like less like our sinful selves or like our worldly selves. And so, kind of like. Um, it's like a it's like a lifestyle change, and in the end, like the idea is that as you become more sanctified, you commune, you, you like you become closer to God, you commune more with God, even in this life. And so, like when He comes back, it's almost like like not there's not a shift, but it's like the next step in like a lifestyle. And I think I think that what you'll see in a lot of Christian church, like a lot of Christian churches today, is you see people who just like like they come into church on Sunday, and then they leave church. And then like, you wouldn't know that they go to church on Sunday, like six days of the week. And then they're in church on Sunday again. And like, and there's nothing, there's no difference at all. Like they're not, they're not trying to be more like Christ. They're not like, you know, and I think that's the problem is that the, I think the average American Christian, it's, it's like a get out of hell free card is what Christianity is. And um, so I don't know, that might be, that might be kind of a uh, harsh, but I really, I really feel pretty strongly about this. So that would be my, I don't know if that really answered your question or not, but yeah, no, I think, I think it's great. I mean, I, and I agree with you. I think, um, you know, when I was young, when I was in, in high school, middle school, high school, I was, I was very devout. I was, I, I, you know, I was very involved with the Catholic church and I was in, in great fear. I remember staying up at night and being afraid that I was going to go to hell, that I was not going to be good enough to, to avoid eternal damnation. It was a scary thought, the idea of an, uh, an endless suffering and pain. It's, it certainly was a motivator for me when I was younger. And um, it was something that it, it took me a long time to kind of open my eyes and see that what you said is very true, that there's a lot of, there's, a lot being preached and not a lot being practiced, mm-hmm. um, by, by a lot of, a lot of people in our, in our 
in our country and in the world. And I think you can definitely see that exemplified. You know, we talk about uh, people like Joel Olstein and some of the well-known religious leaders and, and looking at the way they live their life. And I, I think a lot of, a lot of these higher up figures, you don't see them acting very Christ-like as you said. Um, and so I think that's really where my disillusionment with that started. And, and I thought that it would be more important to be a good person. Um, it was, oh man, I need to to look this up. Well, let me, let me yeah, let me while you're looking it up, corner, I got a great, me, I got a great quote, quote for this. Yeah, let me uh, while you're looking it up, let me make one like comment too on yeah. that because I think like I was pretty harsh to the American Church, and I think you said some stuff about televangelists and Christian leaders that I agree with, but I think ultimately also the you know the Bible says that only God can judge the heart of man. And yeah, so like, sure. and as we say all the time on this podcast, we're all human. And that's honestly what the Bible and the gospel is about is like I said, like the world is broken. We're all broken people. And it's supposed to be a message of hope. Like that, like there's hope in Christ. There's hope in um, what he did on the cross. And so, you know, just because someone like a leader doesn't act right or messes up, I, I can't, I, I can't judge that person and say that when, you know, as I say, I believe that Christ will return one day. And when he returns, I can't say that he'll look at that person and say, I don't know you, you know, maybe, maybe he does. And like, um, but yeah, the church doesn't always represent itself well. In fact, oftentimes it doesn't. All right, Van, what do you think about all this? While I'm trying to find this quote that I want to read to you. Um, no, I think, I think, I mean, clearly Shai's well-versed in his religion and is a practitioner of Christianity, being able to lay out his thoughts so eloquently for us to understand and people like myself as well. But I, I really want to get into um, some of the the Far Eastern beliefs, the talk about Buddhism and all that other stuff, which is something that I studied for like three years before coincidentally starting to go to church as a Christian. So I do have some insight into kind of what both of those um, are and the synergy between the two, which is astounding how similar concept conceptually and, and whatnot they are. Of course, they're trying to obtain the same thing, not to oversimplify a very complex theology, but you know, it's be good, live a good life to the best you can, and you will end up where you want to regard, you know, depending on what that is. And we could talk about that afterwards. So I found my quote and uh, this has been one of my favorite quotes for a long time uh, that sums up very much how I feel, you know, when my, when I kind of stepped away from the Catholic church um, and kind of went to more of an atheist agnostic viewpoint, it really upset my parents, especially my mom, who was like, you know, I think a lot of times, especially people who have been raised Catholic, they tie morality to religion so much so that they feel like, well, if you're not, if you don't believe in God, like what's going to, you know, are you just going to start being a bad person? Like, does that make you a bad person? <laughs> and this, this goes from Marcus Aurelius and it says, live a good life. If there are gods and they are just, then they will not care how devout you have been, but will welcome you based on the virtues you have lived by. If there are gods but are unjust, then you should not want to worship them. And if there are no gods, then you will be gone, but you will have lived a noble life and that, and you will live on in the memories of your loved ones. And I always felt like that was like perfectly encapsulated um, how my morality went, which was that like, I I feel like I can do the right thing for the, for, because it's the right thing and, and try to live a just life. And if I'm wrong about the nature of, of the deities that be, um, hopefully they will judge me fairly. Um, and if they don't, then, you know, perhaps they're not all they're cracked up to be, but, uh, all right. So let's, so that kind of puts a cap on that. Let's, let's go to the East then, Van, what do you want to talk about with, uh, with, with some of those East far Eastern, the Eastern wisdom as it were. <clears throat> um, I, I mean, let's start with, I guess, so we haven't gone to afterlife yet, right? I was talking, um, yeah, we're, we're about kind of what they live, who they are kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and, um, there, yeah, so, so Buddhism is the one that I can speak mostly of. I can't talk much about Hinduism, although they're somewhat related and, um, of course not Islam, which I think is much closer related to Christianity than to Buddhism itself. Um, or Catholicism? I don't know. Should I, think, I feel free I to chime the only, in here? 
just really quick chime in. I think the only the only similarity Islam has to Christianity and Judaism is I think they're the, the considered the three major monotheistic religions in the world. Like I don't think there's really much more in common between um, same Islam God though, and Christianity. right? No, no, Allah is not God, as far as like Christians would believe. It's not. The, huh. It's not the God. It's not the God of the Bible. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I don't think cool. I don't think uh, the Quran and the Bible have. I don't think there's and really almost any similarity. They believe in the figures from the thing is that the, uh, the Muslims believe that the figures from the Bible are historical figures, but like they don't, they believe Jesus was a prophet. They don't believe he was the son of God. They, I mean, right. they acknowledge like people like Abraham and other people like that. But um, it, I mean, as far as like where you project, <laughs> like where you, where you, uh, the implications of the text, they're very, they're very different implications and conclusions from, from those. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> so backing up to um, so specifically Buddhism, which is the, the one that I have studied enough just to be wrong about a few things that will be corrected on. Um, so clearly it was, you know, from the Buddha, right? His teachings, um, Siddhartha Gautama was his um, given name. He was a prince, walked away from all of his glory and riches and whatnot to seek a better understanding of life and um, ultimately became enlightened under the Bodhi tree, uh, which is kind of just a short story of his life. Of course, there's a lot more there than just that. But anyway, in his enlightenment, he shared his teachings as well. And they're very similar to a lot of other teachings, or at least a lot of um, things that I hear from church, from going to church, or when I was going to church, of course, some of it's going to be obvious, right? Be well, teach your people how to do things or, or um, you know, treat everybody well, and all that fun stuff. But ultimately, his first primary teachings are the Four Noble Truths, which is in life there is suffering. And these are supposed, these aren't theories the way he speaks about them. They are actual truths that we all know if we can look within ourselves to be true. And the first one is in life there is suffering or life is suffering or all life is suffering. Those are all three different translations of the First Noble Truth, depending on who you spoke to, right? And then the cause of suffering is clinging. And what they mean by is latching on to things. And it could be material items. It could be conceptual, right? So, oh, I just wish it was this way and not that other way. You're clinging on to the way that it used to be. Or, oh, I wish this person was still here with me or whatnot. And that causes suffering. And, and the end of suffering is to stop clinging, right? So that's the third noble truth is to end suffering, you must end clinging. And then the fourth way is, well, how do we do that? And it's the Eightfold Path. And in the Eightfold Path, he starts talking about, you know, right think, right speech, um, all that kind of stuff that we talked about when I was talking to about uh, Smiley earlier, like being present in the moment, right? With your right speech, right action and things like that. That's how you will end up eventually ending suffering. Cause just like Smiley alluded to earlier, it's like, dang it, I shouldn't have done that. And if I hadn't have done that, maybe I wouldn't be beating myself up right now. And that's another form of clinging. And so yeah. it, it's, it's pretty deep and it takes a while to go over in your head a few times for it to really make sense, or at least it did for me. Um, but ultimately, if you lead this life by the eightfold path, uh, according to the Buddha, it really is that simple. Now, these things aren't simple to do all the time, right? Which is why you have to be present in the moment so that you can recognize when feelings or emotions are happening before you react or or just so that you can process them without a uh, reaction or something like that, that you would later regret or something. So that's a pretty bastardized example of what Buddhism is, but I think I did it well enough to where it should make sense. And you live that life. And ultimately we could talk about what the, uh, what the end of life looks like for Buddhist. Well, let's get into that a little bit. If, if you guys are ready to transition to a little bit more of afterlife talk. And I'm, you know, if you want to reference, you know, popular beliefs that's fine maybe yours is in line but really what i'm what i'm curious about is what are your beliefs on the afterlife um and i want to approach this in two ways and maybe they're the same for you for me they're different but i'd like to know what do you hope awaits us in the afterlife when you die what if you know if things go exactly the way you plan when you pass away what's next for you and then if it's different what do you think actually will happen when you die? What do you think awaits you based on, you know, your just your gut feeling or, or you know, your your personal belief system? Um, I know I start with Shy every time, but that's because Van just talked. So we're gonna go to Shy then. Uh, Shy, what you can, <laughs> you can start with way. yourself. <laughs> I could start with myself. You guys want me to start yeah. with myself? 
I'll start with myself. All right. I, <laughs> put put Smiley on the spot. <laughs> on, I'm ready. I, I've known this for a long time. Uh, this is an easy question for me to answer because um, I've spent a lot of time um, thinking about the afterlife. I've had a couple near-death experiences in my life, and so it's something that I've thought about quite a bit. I'll start with what I think, and what I think is that when you're dead, you're gone. Like, you know, when you blow out the flame of a candle, the fire is gone. And it's just, that's it. It's to me, I, I believe that when I die, it will be indistinguishable from a dreamless sleep that you just never wake up for. Like I'll die. That'll be it. And whatever soul or consciousness that I have, that is my identity is tied to this body and tied to this life. And when my body can no longer function for whatever reason, then, then that will dissipate and return to where, wherever it came from. Uh, you know, I don't have any evidence for this. It's just kind of my gut feeling of just from observing the world. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not forceful in that belief, if if that makes sense. I'm not saying I, I'm sure that this is true. Um, I'm, you know, I think death is the great mystery, right? That That is impossible to truly know what happens. And, and, while I'm not, you know, uh, looking forward to dying, uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to hang around as long as I can. But I don't I don't have a fear of death uh, the way many people do. Um, I I feel like I probably should have died a number of years ago due to uh, some of the choices I made. And so, really, every moment I'm alive is 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 kind of it's like free 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 time. You know, it's it's time that I didn't expect to get. Um, and when I do die, uh, I I'm if there is something more than a dreamless sleep, I'm excited to see what it is. It's, it's the next, it's the final great adventure. Um, as, as Dumbledore put it in Harry Potter to an organized mind, death is just the next great adventure. So um, that's my thought. I'll Didn't Peter back. Pan say that as well? Oh, I think he did. Yes. And hook. <laughs> hook. Hook. Death is, yes. death is the, 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 what, the yeah. final adventure. The, um... Something like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> maybe I'm crossing the, crossing the streams, but uh, so that, Never that's, my, the that's my thought. I'll save my hope for, right. we'll, we'll snake we'll back. We'll do a round of expectations. We'll do a round of expectations. All right. Round of all hope. Right. So, all right, go ahead, Shai. So I don't, I think you worded that just beautifully smiley and not like, I think especially how you talked about like how forceful you are. And I think you really like, summed up kind of the idea of what faith is to a certain extent. And like, I don't know, we all operate on faith so much more on a daily basis than we ever really think about. And it's easy to like make fun of other people because they believe certain things that maybe they can't back up scientifically or whatever. But it's like, I mean, you get in your car and you, you turn it on, you are having faith. It's not going to explode. You know, you might have, you might have a good precedence. It hasn't exploded, you know, 700 days in a row, but you know, it could explode today. Um, I think as far as expectations, I, I don't know what to expect. I mean, I think this bleeds more into hopes than expectations. I, I, I think that, you know, obviously I've grown up in the church and I've grown up in a, in a biblical context and, and surrounding. And so I think just over my life and over time, I, I, I have, I guess I would say that I expect that what the Bible talks about is what, what will happen. And I think that, uh, I think that um, once again to, uh, so I guess quick, just to talk about that really quickly, like once again, to kind of set myself maybe against the American church and what the afterlife looks like. Um, you know, once again, I think that, you know, you go into American church where the pastors like, you know, really preaching a fire and brimstone sermon, they call them fire and brimstone sermons because what they, what they would say is that if you're bad, you're going to go to hell and hell is like a place of fire. Um, and normally it's associated with like a downward direction as if it's underneath us, um, I guess at the core of the earth. I don't really know what that refers to. Um, and then if you're good, you'll go to heaven, which is above us. And that is like a place of gold and angels and, um, you know, clouds. early gates, clouds. Um, it's really bright. Um, I think that... <laughs> And I think, you know, honestly, when I was a kid, that's I kind of, that was the impression I had. Like, I grew up kind of in that context. But I think especially, like, it's very interesting, like, working at the school, it's very interesting, like, actually, like, going to, like, kind of what you've, like, just kind of your average American church for a while, but then going to, like, a place where you have, like, dozens of PhD-educated people who, like, believe the same things, but they, like, have, a, like, a much deeper interpretation of, like, a book, or they have, like, a much more, like, reasoned approach. And so... 
I think over time how that's morphed is I think what I would what, what, what I think that a lot of the faculty who teach at the school that I, I work at would say is that really when 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 the end of time comes when Christ returns it's not that uh, like let's talk about like hell isn't so much maybe a lake of fire I don't know that we can speak authoritatively about what heaven or hell will be like but it's more the idea behind hell is more just isolation it's more just like separation from God and anything that's good. And so whatever that looks like, it's not, even if it was a lake of fire, it wouldn't be the lake of fire that would be painful or horrible. It would just be the fact that like you would be separated from goodness for eternity. Um, that would be hell. That, I've heard hell described as the absence of God's light, basically. Yeah. So basically that would be the idea. Sounds terrible. Um, and, it sounds uh, like hell. and then the, and then the idea of heaven would be, and I think there are, I, I'm not going to do this justice probably, but I think that the, the, the interpretation of what, what Revelation talks about and what Jesus talked about that I think is most interesting. And maybe this does tie in a bit to, to hope. Maybe I'll save this for hope then. Like, cause I think like in my mind, this is something that like, I hope this is what it turns out to be like, I guess. But I was, I was wondering this whole week and a half when we had this topic on how you were going to differentiate the two. Cause I would have imagined that, you know, being a good follower, or not good in any judgmental sense, but being a follower of Christ, like you would, your expectations should also be your hope as far as what I know of. Yeah, that's a great. Well, point. well, but I think this is, but I, so I guess, let me say this is like, I think that's where I was going though. And it is kind of that, but yeah. I don't want, I don't want to like, I guess talking about heaven would be my expectation. What heaven will look like is kind of what my hope is. What it yeah. Oh, like gotcha. Well. Yep. But like, yep. that's what I'm saying is like, there's also interpretation, like, like, I don't know. We once again we get into a whole like we get we can have a whole podcast probably just on Christianity alone. Like you know what I mean? Like um and talk about just like what is divinely inspired word and like you know written by man but inspired by God and that needs to be interpreted. And, like what does that all look like? You know what I mean? Like that's such you know there's classes at the school I work at that go for 13 weeks to talk about just that or like one book of the Bible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's a deep topic. We're just scratching the surface. Here. <clears throat> All right, Van, let's hear it from you. What? Where, let's go to your uh, to your expectations, if you don't mind. So first and foremost, I just realized focus target is backwards <laughs> behind me. No, no, that's just it on looks your good mirror. for us. Yeah, your mirror. Yeah, oh, really? View, apparently. Okay, well, so that's good to know. Yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because we always did like the right hand, left hand thing, and we thought it was weird. So okay, good. I'm glad it looks yeah, looks on your side. Fine. Okay, good. It's always so in focus. That that it's always focus fine. Target is in fact a sniper's bolt, and you're about to take a bullet in the head. <laughs> so what I was thinking about that too. I think I think I'm behind the scope, is how I envision it, and that that's how I was going to spin the focus target being backwards. I was like, you know what? <laughs> that's why it's, it's inside the scope. <laughs> Can't get me if I go over here. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Okay, uh, what was the question? Uh, so let's say you take that sniper bolt to the head. What happens to you? What happens next? Oh, nice segue. In, in just like, what's your gut? What's your gut feeling? What do you yeah. think? Happens next? So it's weird. Um, again, innately growing up, I didn't grow up in a religious house. I grew up in a very um, spiritually liberal house. Uh, when I would go and visit my godmother, we would go to church every once in a while. Um, but, you know, I, it was, I, I can count on a single hand how many times that happened when I was 16 I started going to Christian um, I went to church uh, Christian church for a good year and then just made the decision not to go and then again I just started now here in my 30s going again so <clears throat> and then studying Buddhism for three years prior to that and practicing Buddhism um, as, as much as I could um, so my religion experience is pretty eclectic. Um, but for some reason I've always felt that in reincarnation and I don't know why, but I've always believed in reincarnation and there's a lot of problems to that too. Again, we can have, we can have a million podcasts on that, right? So like if you're reincarnated, there's what, 8 billion people on the earth. Okay. Well, next year there's going to be 9 billion. Where did the other billion come from? Like those couldn't have been reincarnated people or whatnot. Like the math doesn't make sense reincarnation wise. Well, but that, I think that's easy to get around, right? Like it just means that there may be a holding area, right? Right. And, and in Buddhism, they, souls, then they do believe that there is a heaven, but the heaven isn't eternal. The heaven is your kind of holding pattern right. until exactly. rebirth. And, and then you're now, depending on how good you did on earth how well you behaved 
determines whether you're going to be reborn back as a human and given the opportunity to become enlightened or you come back as a dog or a bug or something like that. Well, that's what I was going to ask you too, is that do you only believe in human to human reincarnation? No, I don't. Once again, I mean, you've got like, if anything, it would, it would actually balance the scale. Yeah, you're right, actually. Because if you'd say all living things, things yeah, they're coming out like that's a good point. If you say all living, right. Yeah. So, so there is, I guess there is an easy, easy out there, but no, I I believe all that. And for some reason, again, like this was never taught to me, but I always believed and I don't believe it so much now, but I had believed that you would relive every life that you caused misery in. And I could be more specific in saying like, if you saw a ant walking down the street and you intentionally stepped on it, to cause harm to that, you would then be reborn as that ant later on. Not that exact one, but as an ant and suffer the same fate that you caused other animals. I don't believe that as literal now, but I did growing up for some reason from childhood. And I, I thought that was interesting. So I can't get away from this element of rebirth and reincarnation. Um, I don't necessarily know if, or I don't know, none of us know, but I don't necessarily believe that it's as literal rebirth as you're going to come back as an animal. You're going to come back as a dog. You're going to come back as a human or whatnot anymore. But I believe, I believe something happens. It's not just you're dead and gone and that's it. And my biggest argument for that is if there's something as magnificent and mysterious and I'll say magical as life itself, then why is it so difficult to believe that there's something as magical and mystical and amazing as an afterlife also. So, or some other type of form of being or consciousness or something like that. And I just think it's too beautiful. It's too magical to when you die and this isn't being poetic. This is, I I just think there's too much there to end up being nothing when your heart stops beating and the synapses stop firing. Fair enough. Um, you got something shy? Yeah, well, this is a little bit off off topic, but I, I I don't know I don't know if we can answer this quickly because I've never studied reincarnation. And I, you guys bring up a point that I've never considered. Like, so is the idea behind reincarnation that there are no new souls introduced like into the world like on a regular basis? Like, is it oh is it the idea that they're just it's just being souls are constantly being recycled? Because right? in my mind, I guess I thought it was some kind of like hybrid approach where like you know like new babies are born or new animals or bugs are created. But then also like, you know, when someone or something dies, it then also, but I guess I, I'd never really looked into that or, or thought, and maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe we can't answer that right now. That's a good question though. It's something I hadn't studied just cause it wasn't like, you know, just wasn't anything I thought of or so I, uh, I will find that out for you. Cause now I am, I am interested. Just read, not a lot of practical application there, but just, yeah. I was curious if there was an answer. It's a good question. So we're running, we're starting to run a little bit low on time. Weird, so right? Who, oh, yeah, no. We, we, like you said, uh, all these topics could be gone. We could go off on a tangent and talk the entire time just on any of these things, and maybe we will come back to this. I think there's a lot of, there's still a lot of meat here to chew. Uh, but let's go really quick on on your hope, and uh, you know, because Shy didn't get to get to his, and and uh, mine is differently a lot different. Um, I will say that my hope would be if if i died today i would want um omniscience right like like it would be great if when you died all the mysteries Hmm. of life were revealed to you and you could understand all the things that today as as humans we just don't seem capable of formulating an answer to the all the unknowns about the galaxy and the history of the universe and the purpose of life and just everything, just to have perfect knowledge, uh, would be amaz- amazingly gratifying. Um, that's what I would wish for. Um, would just to just to know, to get kind of some some understanding. So, are you <clears throat> are you humanoid? Is there a you? Are you you? Are you are? I don't I don't know if it matters to me. Like I think if if I lost my individuality, to be able to have, to be maybe one with everything and know everything, I'd be all right with that. I mean. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's that's a, that's a that's a great question. The other thing I, I want to talk just a little bit onto what Shai was saying about an in- interpretation of heaven and hell. Um, for a while, when I was in philosophy, I, I was kind of struck by an inspiration about the nature of heaven and hell, and I thought, you know, what if heaven and hell isn't at all like as the stereotypical ideas that Shai was 
talking about what if it's really just um when you die you just relive all the scenes from your life Mm. over and over Mm. and if you've lived a good life and you have loved ones and you've done good deeds you have all these great memories to relive and be stuck with and if you've lived a bad life and all you've done is cause pain and suffering to other people that's what you're stuck with and that's why it's interpreted as an eternity of good or an eternity of suffering because it's based on how you've lived and, and you have to kind of live with um, the, the word, you know, it's almost like the life you've lived creates your afterlife. Um, I don't know if I believe that, but I thought it was a kind of an interesting idea. And I think like, kind of like as a qualifier, like almost like from another, like maybe from an omniscience, like you gain omniscience than that. Right. Like, so it's not like you're reliving it the way you saw it. Cause a lot of, you know, right. you might say a lot of people yes, are horrible people absolutely. on the earth, but they're happy about, you know, they, they seem happy right. and they don't see yes. all the people's lives they've ruined, but like yes. they'd have to then live their life through the lenses of those that we, they, yeah. yeah. Well, uh. A little bit the way Van was talking, like, you know, yeah. see, <clears throat> seeing the, the impact that you had on that insect that you crushed or that person whose life you, perhaps negatively changed through your your own selfishness or whatever could you know it, it would certainly that would certainly be a just afterlife uh that would be one that would you know that i would feel good about i think because hmm. i think right now one of the sad things is that there's a feeling that people who live poor lives who like the bad people of the world maybe aren't you know you want them to be brought to justice to an to an extent and so um anyway let's go to i'm sorry i I went a little bit long there i know we're running out of time so let's talk to shy um yeah so what i i guess what i've come to expect recently of what you know i think the bible truly says of what heaven will be and what i hope what i think sounds really intriguing and really good is that like it's it's basically a global garden of eden kind of is the idea and so like at the beginning of the bible god creates everything and he creates this garden that is considered perfect and he creates a man in the garden and there's no like as man you, you described i think like one of the things that christianity tries to deal with a lot of it like with buddhist the concept of clinging like clinging and i, I think like striving is a very good like another term for that like as humans we strive we we compete we strive we'd like this is how we live our lives. We get up, we got to make that, you know, we got to bring back, bring home the bacon, whatever. And so I think like the idea of guard, the garden of Eden is there was none of that. People were just living yeah. in like perfect harmony with God and there was peace, you know, the lion laid down with the lamb. And I think so. So I think that people like a lot of modern Christian scholars will look at the Bible and look at rev- like different areas of the Bible and say that basically when God, Christ returns, he's basically going to take creation and basically create that sense and so he will eliminate that that strife that striving he will renew creation and basically then on like on a global maybe even universal scale basically there will be peace and there'll be prosperity and there will be uh just joy um so i think that's that's what i hope it's a it's a, it's a beautiful vision <laughs> if it if it uh, if it comes to pass what about you van sky yeah i don't know if i have a hope to be honest um i guess if i um again i don't know why it's not important to me um it just it just isn't but if i guess if i had a blue sky dream of what it should be it would just be the quintessential 100 virgins us yes 72 virgins <laughs> <laughs> it would be the quintessential um like american idea of heaven right where you're just there with your family i'll get to see dodger again get to play with my dogs and everybody's just amazing and in bliss forever which i you know if you're gonna blue sky dream then that that's what it would be i guess all right well but i don't know man like after a while wouldn't you get bored of even your dog it just doesn't sound i've always felt the heaven sounds a little bit boring uh, preferable yeah. to health, certainly. Yo, know, absolutely. Uh, if I had to choose yeah. between the two, yeah. Let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if those are my only options, let's be clear. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a good conversation. I think. Uh, I think we. There's a lot of additional topics that we could really, that we could really get into if we if we wanted to, to go a little bit deeper. Um, but you know, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have some thoughts on the meaning of life, on the afterlife, on whether you think the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie is better than the books, and you want to fight it out with me about that, um, that would give me a good opportunity to 
stay very centered and not get angry at you. Uh, so you'd be making me a better person for it. Uh, let us know. You know, we have a, a Twitter handle at Focus Target. We have a YouTube page, Focus Target Podcast. You can find all of our old episodes on our YouTube page, as well as um, the streams that we're doing after we stream. We're going to post them on the YouTube page so you can watch them afterward. And of course, if you want to view us live on Twitch, we are on Twitch TV. Uh, twitch.tv backslash focus target podcast um most nights now we're streaming one at least one of us and sometimes in the day too so um check it out uh you know if you if you follow us on there you'll get notifications when we go live we're playing a lot of various different games if you're interested in deep rock galactic van's been doing a lot of deep rock um if you're you know i've been doing some old school rp some old school uh nintendo games i've got a couple lined up that i'm excited for so a lot of good stuff on the twitch channel if you want to check that out and of course if you have any feedback for us we'd love to hear from you our email is focus target podcast at gmail.com van is no longer locked out of our gmail account so he can once again respond to your messages if you sent him something before and he ignored it which i know happened um you know maybe <laughs> uh maybe you can try again so, i apologize uh, formally <laughs> so um for for episode uh, season three, episode eighty. Thanks for being with us. We hope you join us again. I'm your host, Smiley. This is Shy, and I'm Van. As always, cover us, Porkins. We're out. They're covering you. I can tell. I can see the sights. They're they're covering you. A little too closely. <laughs> I look like they're covering you as much as uh, aiming at you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>